Um, welcome back for uh, in the Detox is our podcast. I'm with Robert Nichols. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, thank you first and foremost for having me on, Mr. Mauricio Florian, aka Junior. So yeah, man, I'm Rob Nichols, your boss of bitch real estate entrepreneur, as I'm known online on IG, on YouTube, and other platforms. But at the end of the day, I'm a guy who was born and raised in Boston, specifically Dorchester, not too far from where you where you were raised, Mr. Mauricio here. And um, got my start in real estate when I was, how old? 24, 24 years old, bought my first place. It was a disastrous buy. I was told not to buy it by one of my mentors. I disregarded the advice because I was a young guy who just thought he had it all together. I was a young maverick, I was going to say. From that perspective, guys, it's been a long, long journey uh, from there to where I am today, uh, owning a real estate brokerage, owning an investment firm, owning a lending company. And so much more, guys, and more to come, as I always say. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm a product of a public education system here in Boston, Boston Public School badge, John D. O'Brien, class of 99. Went to college for four years, realized that, you know, at that time in my life, I was just really finding myself. You know, I went and studied pre law as a political science major, didn't end up doing that. And uh, once I found real estate, I got, the, I got bitten by the real estate bug. It was it. That was it for me. You know, that was all she wrote. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. The main thing that me and Rob will have um, individual conversations on, yes, he's a real estate guy. He, he's doing um, investments. But the main thing, like, he's not only a real estate guy. Like, throughout the seven years that I've known him, he has um, helped me in my personal life, in my professional life. Um, I, always be a, I always appreciate um, the guidance that um he provided for me now it's been my pleasure to work with you man and i uh, really help you grow and mature not only as a person but as a businessman as well and it's, it's exciting to see your growth and i I'm, I'm very excited for what the future holds for you yeah i appreciate that um so can you tell us how it was um you growing up yeah, so I, I didn't grow up with much guys. You know, I was talking to one of my other team members the other day, Milton. He was like, man, I didn't know how rough you had it. You know, we were kind of talking about, you know, why I am how I am and, and you know, why I'm so appreciative of, of the things I have and why I, I believe personally it's easy, easy for me to practice gratitude, especially when you're coming from a place where you didn't have much to start off with. So, you know, my mom was an illegal immigrant. She came here through Mexico from Jamaica by way of Mexico. Didn't know she was going to be here. She thought she was just coming on a vacation. I said, hey, I'm sending you on a vacation up to Boston. And uh, long did she, you know, little did she know the journey that lie ahead. So she came here when she was 16, didn't graduate from high school, didn't have much education, started working and, you know, moved from uh, house to house with different family members. And so uh, she ended up meeting my dad at church. And, um, you know, they ended up getting married. My father was a union electrician, hardworking person. Really, I, I give him a lot of credit. I'm forever grateful for him for everything he did for me, you know, and at an early age, my mom, being the young mother she was, I uh, really wasn't ready to be a mom, and she ended up leaving my sister and I, and so through that crisis, guys, we struggled with homelessness, abandonment at a very young age, not to mention there was a recession going on um, at that same time, so at a very young age, I knew all about the economy and, you know, what, what that essentially means when it comes to, um, you know, really trying to navigate some hard financial times. And so from there, my dad ended up getting remarried, but it was, it was still tough. I mean, we grew up with a lot of poverty. My father was the only one working in the household. So there were times we didn't have heat. There was times we struggled for, to have money for food. There was times we struggled for bus fare. There were Christmases, there were no gifts, like all kinds of stuff that, and trauma that, you know, at the end of the day, it could either destroy you or, or you can allow it to make you stronger. And I chose the latter. I chose to allow it to, to make me stronger and above all appreciate just the opportunity to pursue success in order to uh, not give up when things get hard, because I know what it's like to be even harder and I'm not going to give up, give up without a fight guys. So that's really, I, I guess some defining moments and some defining aspects of my childhood that really make me appreciative of life and appreciate the people around me, but also really have driven me to really strive for more because I know, you know, in life, you know, that I have a, a very unique ability and skill, that God has given me. And with that skill, I really want to empower people to transform their lives in order to uh, achieve their best selves. Because everyone has it in them, guys. That's the key, you know, Junior. That's the one thing I think a lot of people think like, oh, you know, I'm going to learn this from this person and 
I'm going to do this and do that. But the reality is we have the greatness within us is finding ways to pull it out of us. And that's where educating yourself, investing in yourself, taking care of yourself, meditation, all those things are designed to pull out the best parts of you and bring it to life so that you can become your best self and in turn share that with the world and helping others, guys. So that's really, I think, you know, kind of characterizes who I am, what I'm about. I've always been fascinated in transformation just because someone who grew up like I grew up, you know, I always saw things on, from one side of the fence looking in and I'm like, how do those people have such a great life? And how come I don't have that? How come I didn't have it? And how can I achieve a life where I'm able to add value to others and, and really, you know, just bless everyone who comes in my presence. It's not just about money. It's about really understanding that, you know, I wanted to be a blessing to others and help others achieve their greatness and their greatest self as well. Yeah. So um, thank you for sharing your story. So what was your what, what was your a key moment that it's hard for you as a kid to see um like the other side of of um success when you were going through hardships? What was a key moment that you remember of you saying it will be better or like do you have any um anybody around you at that time that helped you? be remain positive you know the craziest thing junior i was it's one of those things and i think when you have the right mindset you're always pulling and looking for hope you're looking for something to hold on to and believe it or not there was one guy i didn't really even know him that well but he was a black black guy i uh, of haitian descent who owned a uh, commercial building across the street from where i grew up and so you know i uh, mr gene is what i called him but Mr. Gene was the first black man that I ever seen who owned real estate, had a nice car and looked to be living very, you know, very successful, very content. And uh, I was like, man, I'm, I'm over here struggling, living across the street in my house. And this guy's, you know, living in, I heard he lived in Milton. And I heard that, you know, he, you know, from what I had known about him, but I knew he owned a lot of properties. And I said, you know what, one day, you know, I, I want to not be him, but I want to have a high level of success where I can say, that I'm adding value and I'm, I'm providing for my family and I'm living an amazing life. And, you know, and that was really what it was. I think we all have to try to find the role models. Like I love my dad. He was a great moral role, more, uh, excuse me, role model, but business wasn't his thing and that's okay. He, you know, he wasn't into that. He was primarily focused on, you know, providing for his family, working hard and, and, and living his best life. And that's great. And I learned a lot from him, but on the business front, I always look for heroes and, and people locally who are doing business and uh, really try to just emulate their behavior. And then once I went to college, uh, my ex-girlfriend's father was also an entrepreneur. And he was the first entrepreneur that I really got to talk to and who kind of just started to mentor me and cultivate my mind um, in, in the direction of thinking about owning my own business and how I should go about doing that. So yeah, it was some key moments along the way, but I think the one thing I'd say for any young people out there, and now you have the advantage of YouTube and all these other platforms that I didn't have. It didn't even exist back then. But, um, and I ain't that old. But with that said, I definitely think that young folks should leverage having access to that because there are a lot of role models and a lot of people out there who can really show you above all else that your success is possible. I'm going to say that again. Your success, your best life, your best self, everything you ever wanted out of life is possible. And we are the ones who limit ourselves when, it's, when we start limiting our beliefs. But there's nowhere it says in the world that you can't have, you know, what you want to have out of life. But you've got to be willing to put in the work and go through a process of self-transformation to get there. And so really, that's what, what at the end of the day, I think he did for me as a young guy. I saw the possibility of having financial stability and, and, and abundance. Um, and again, it's not all about the money. It's about having a family. I have four kids. I have a beautiful wife. And I'm, I've created the life that I've always wanted and, and I'm still in the process of creating it and striving for more and to have a larger impact. But at the end of the day, you know, the possibilities for our success are endless, but the key is to look for the examples that are what we want as opposed to what we don't want. It's easy to find the things you don't want. It's easy to be around the people that say, oh, stop thinking like that. Stop talking like that. Oh, you can't have that. Oh, you're crazy. You know, it's hard. It takes a little extra effort, but I guarantee you, if you do it, it will propel you to where you want to be versus where you are now, where you don't want to be. 
No, yeah, definitely. I actually know Gene. Like, I actually know him. I, I've seen him a few times over here. He owned that that whole space. So, right. Since I was, he owns since the I was block. a kid. He owned since the block. He owned it since I was a kid. <laughs> and then he, like, his daughter is, um, owns a, um, is renting the commercial space. As, um, Got it. The dentist over here. Nice. So. Yeah, man, but that's it. He he inspired. Trust me, he was one of the few role models I had who was an entrepreneur in that community, and he's still there working hard, doing what he's doing. But, yeah, no, we need to look for that. And that's what I think a lot of people don't realize, the importance of seeing those examples that maybe they're not present in our lives directly, but even as, as close as across the street or on YouTube or someone who, you know, you think you can relate to in some capacity, gravitate towards that. Hear their journey. Apply what you've learned from their journey to your life, you know, in the areas where you think you, you need some assistance. Learn from their story and apply it and see how it works out for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I know, I know when I was younger, I would always think, like, um, once you become a millionaire, now, that's like, you're a millionaire. now. You don't, you don't really have to work as hard. But Gene, Gene. He he is constantly in one of the other properties that um spaces that he owns there. He owns yep. a laundry mat as well, and he's there like almost every day. If he's not there, he's at the um tech castle place. If he's not at tech castle place, he's sitting. So it's like, and going on that is like you being um you are um Rob being at the level of success that you have. You're still in dumpsters. You're still at the at the um, rehab site. You're still there doing what you have to do to get stuff done, even though you could just hire other people to do it. 100%, Junior. And I think that speaks to the fact that the grind doesn't stop. You know, I'm, I'm a millionaire, Junior. I'm a millionaire. If you look at all the assets I have, yeah. you look at everything I have going on, I'm worth... Well into the, you know, into the upper millions, you know, but at the same time, the grind never stops, as I always say, guys, you know, I, and it's not, like I said, it's not about the money. Like, once you find something you're passionate about and you really, you know, enjoy what you're doing, it doesn't feel like work. Like, for me, I could, I could work technically all day, every day, because it doesn't feel like work. When I'm out here promoting myself for my videos and everything that I'm doing, it's to inspire others. And I get so much joy from that. I get energy from that. I, you know, it's, it's great. Whether it's one person I inspire or a hundred or a thousand doesn't make a difference. As long as the message is getting out there, that is my goal because everything I do is really with the intention of providing content that has the power to transform someone's life, to be an example to someone. Maybe they see something in me that reminds them of themselves. You know, I was maybe in their shoes not too long ago, but they can see that if you keep, consistently working and you apply the principles of success, you will get there, you know, and, and that's really why I do it, you know, it, and it doesn't feel like work. And I know Gene is very driven, same thing. You know, he, he loves what he does, he loves what he does. And he's built that and he's cultivated his business. And, you know, it's, it's people think you're just kind of chilling on an island or you just want to be, you know, hanging out all day. But the reality is it, everything requires work. The most successful of us get it. We're always working on ourselves. It's never over. But the best part about it is it doesn't feel like work once you find something that really deeply moves you to, to act on a consistent basis. Yeah, I know, like, go on top of um, transformation. I always say this to anybody I'm around. The, I've been um, at Boston Church Realty Group as a realtor since 2013. Well, not as a realtor, but in the industry since 2013. And who I was then and who I am now are two completely different people. I always say this, I, me, the 19-year-old me will not get along with the 26-year-old 26, 26 me. <laughs> I always say this because it's a fact. Oh, man. I, like, you, you can't even speak on it because you, like, you were like an, um, a, a, um, a second person seeing my journey that right. I was very quiet. I wouldn't really express myself. I was very shy. Like, and to see that I'm still learning every day, but 
that I'm more outspoken and when I feel a certain way, I express it. Then me staying quiet and me hoping that hopefully they see hope hopefully they see that I feel a certain way. But you can't with in any any relationship in any industry you can't assume that somebody knows right. how you feel if you don't express it. That's right, and when, man. Now you come out of your show quite a bit. Yeah. So what are some of the daily habits that you do before you get your day started? Ha. Great question, man. So number one on the list, although I haven't been as consistent lately, uh, cause I do miss my gym, but working out. So I'm, I've been working out now probably like three to four days a week, whereas typically when the gym's open, I'm there anywhere from four to five days a week, sometimes six days a week. So it's been harder to, to, to be consistent with it, but I am still getting it in. That's one reading is huge guys. So every day, I read at least one chapter uh, from a book, um, audio books. When I'm driving, I'm even listening to audio books or podcasts. Um, and then the third thing, and lastly, is I try to, you know, to definitely listen to a motivational video uh, first thing in the morning every day. Sometimes not first thing in the morning, but I, I always get it in. I get that in on a daily basis. And the reason for that, I got this bracelet here. These are my Robert Nichols official bracelets. You hopefully could see what it says is backwards, but it says mindset matters, you know, and it has the RN logo on it somewhere on there. If I can find it, I think it's on. Yeah, there we go. Robert Nichols brand. And then on the inside, it says invest in you. And so at the end of the day, guys, you want to control your mindset. Your mindset is everything when it comes to really structuring your day and, and getting your, your mind fixated and getting your mind shifted from negative to positive. As human beings, we are inherently negative. And it's not your fault. The reason this is, is nature. A hundred or thousands of years ago when, when man was, you know, came into being, in order for us to protect ourselves, in order for us to survive, we had to, to have a flight, fight or flight response, which is triggered by, you know, a fear or anxiety or all of the things that cause us to go on the negative side of the spectrum. And the reason that's important is that if you see uh, you know, an animal coming after you, chasing in the woods, you think it wants to come play nice, and you stay there and get eaten alive, we wouldn't be here today. And so we are inherently always thinking on what the, the worst outcome could be as opposed to the best outcome could be. So what I find helps me daily is listening to motivational videos that um, you know, on YouTube. I have a list of over 100 that I've already saved. I'm happy to share with anyone, um, but any one of them will get you, your mind shifted. And they range from, you know, about three minutes all the way up to three hours, depending on you know what, what kind of time you have. But they're all impactful videos in different ways with a message that allows you to see the possibility towards achieving your goals and, and towards overcoming whatever obstacles are in front of you. Uh, stop try, trying to stop you from shining, trying to stop you from achieving. So that's those are really my daily habits. So working out to recap, uh, reading and listening to motivational videos on a daily basis. No, yeah, those are definitely good tips. I, I definitely need to start working out again. I've been slacking. I, I was like, I was going to get um work out again before this whole stay home advisory started. So hopefully, no soon. excuses, man. You can no, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I mean, have to, yeah, no, but yeah, I'm going to start working at home as well. Um, That's what I do, man. I, I lift weights here at the house. I got you know just two ten pounders. I do a bunch of push ups. You know, I got some ropes that I can I can do like pull ups from and different things from. So I, I'm getting it in, man. Come on, no excuses, young buck. No excuses, yeah. man. Yep. The yeah. other thing I want to add to that last that last statement, you question you asked, is while these are my habits, I didn't create these habits. These are the habits of millionaires, billionaires, world leaders, the most successful people in the world, especially those who are self made, because it, it it's a different set the rules for folks who are self-made, folks who don't come from anything, folks who don't have a silver spoon, folks who ain't trust from babies like you, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a whole different set of rules that we have to live by. And there you go. Show, show them how it's done. But uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, if you look at the top billionaires, I know we went to um, a, a, a marketing conference last year, and um, what was, I forget the name of the conference, but um, at that conference, you know, you saw, you know, Sarah Blakely speak and she talked about these habits as well. And you'll find that a very high percentage of millionaires and billionaires start their day the, very similar to how I start my day. And so if there's anything we can learn from those folks who are self-made, 
it's that it's important to engage in those activities, if nothing more, just to get your mind right and to feel better and open yourself up to the possibilities. No, yeah, definitely. Like, I, I, a couple of days ago, we had a, a pretty long conversation on, um, on why certain things happen. I'm not going to go into much detail because some of the, like, some of the, some of the items were um, personal, but my mindset wasn't like there. Like, I wasn't, um, I wasn't completely happy, which is like, self happiness is, is, can definitely affect affect how you how you do certain things and if you're not happy within yourself it's, it's gonna be very hard for you to be successful in the business in any, any business that you want to do right yeah yeah no that that is the starting point and again the other thing that you want to adopt in your daily practice is gratitude and being yeah. grateful and the power of gratitude, I, I don't know, you know, scientifically they've proven it. I don't know why it works, but when you show gratitude for others, it pays, it pays you back tenfold. It makes you feel better. It shifts your mood. It shifts your mindset. And really, it, it starts the journey of internal happiness, which, again, if you're not happy, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's very hard for you to bring something to the world that's going to add a lot of value to others and really empower others as well. So no, that's a very good point you bring up. I know we talked about that, you know, and, and giving, those are the two things, you know, gratitude and giving, they go hand in hand and they're both very similar. And people always think that, you know, giving means, Oh, I have to give money or, you know, I have to go and volunteer, but especially in the days of coronavirus, like it is right now, like literally just calling someone to let them know you're thinking about them and that, you know, you're here to support them, supporting someone in need you know, giving your time in the sense of just listening and, and understanding and showing support, showing love. That's another form of giving as well. And so don't make any excuses. Find ways to be grateful. Show gratitude every day, every single day. Tell at least one person that you're grateful for them. And secondly, give. Give your money, give your time, give your support, whatever you can give. Just give something on a daily basis. And I guarantee you that is another piece to where happiness that's the root of your personal happiness, guys. And selfish people don't get that. And it's hard, especially if you come from an environment where everyone's for self. But I guarantee you, you know, if you can find the right environment and start adopting that as a practice, daily practice, your life will be better for it. What do you think about that? No, yeah, 100%. I, in the conversation we had, I, was, I brought this up. But um, I volunteered um, a little bit ago um at a food bank um greater boston food bank and i remember i told you that i ha i had a sense of like kind of ca like calmness it's, it's very hard to explain because i'm not in that moment right now but it's like i was i had a sense of like kind of like happiness that i was doing my part on like helping even though it was it was my time that i'm like it was a feeling that i never had before it was like I felt good with what I was doing. And I was like, like that was the first ever time that I volunteered. And it kind of surprised me because I, having that feeling was like pretty surprising. The, yeah, and, it, and, it, and it's natural, man. It's natural. Yeah. It's, 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 and people don't realize it until they do it. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's the first time you've done it but you clearly saw the benefit of it. And again, it's, it's just so rewarding for the people you're giving to, but it's even more re rewarding for the person actually doing the giving. Oh yeah, and I'm, um, anybody that's listening should definitely um, go on the gratitude side of, of things. The person doing the audio, um, I used the Calm app um, for one of the days that was about gratitude was to write letter for somebody that you are grateful for. Um, I did, uh, they told you that to the one, but like the three main people that are important in my life, that I, I, I had to write three. Um, I want you to write just writing one. Um, because these three people like had very important um, factors in my life. And one of them I'm talking to right now. No, thanks, man. I really appreciate it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Junior, 
like I always tell you, it's, it starts with you and it starts with your desire and it starts with you putting in the work on yourself and just pulling out your greatness. And so I'm glad I could be a positive influence towards that end. But at the end of the day, man, you, you did all the heavy lifting, not me. I, I could talk, but you got You got to, you got to act. You got to put in the work. Oh yeah. So, I, like, that's, 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 I, 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 like it's the person, um, each individual person has to do, put in the work. But if you have negative people around you and you have people trying to put you down throughout the years, it, it, it takes you a little bit to realize like that you like you actually worth something. Um and it takes like sometimes it takes somebody telling you that you build enough of a thick skin to say to yourself and you actually believe it. Yeah, no, good point. Very good point, man. And and that's where environment is so important. And I think that's one of the benefits I have. My father was a very positive person and, you know, he always supported me. He never put me down or anything like that. And that's one of the, the benefits I had. I didn't, you know, I had a stepmom. I really didn't have my, my biological mom, but um, at least he wasn't a negative force in my life. Um, you know, but I know a lot of folks, they have negativity sometimes from both parents or from one parent. And it's, it is hard to overcome that. It really is. You know, I wasn't always great on, the, on my mom's side, obviously. But um, yeah, no, that, that's a really good point you bring up. And, and that's why really doing everything in your power on a daily basis to show gratitude, to give and control your mindset. Be very careful of the content that you take in because that content also can bring you up or it can bring you down. down. There's power in music and there's power in everything we put in here. And so, especially if you're in a negative environment for anyone out there, you really have to control as much as you can control of what goes in here and what stays and what goes out. And keep the positive, throw away the negative. Yeah, I, re I remember um, around the time I first started, I had a few people around me at that given time that I was like, seeing how, how um, the people around me at that given time when um, roll with each other, and how they motivate each other, how they helped each other, however way they could, kind of told me, I'm like, if this is how it is, why am I seven minutes for less? Right. And, and have people that take advantage of, of, of your kindness. Um, and like uh, were bad people like around me that I over time I I had to cut them off. The you can you can't allow negativity to be forced into you when you're not a negative person. And like you 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 know my story that like I have people that if I continue going down the route of of being around them. I would not have lasted as long as I did uh, BTRD. Very true. And, and that's the thing. Like, if you have those people in your environment, guys, they pull you down. You don't pull them up. And that's, I think, the misconception. People think that negative people can be changed. But nobody can change anyone. You have to want to change yourself. And most negative folks don't even think it's a problem. They think the way they are is normal because that's all they know. But if you recognize it, that means there's something different about you. And with there being something different about you, that means you need to have a different environment than that, those other people that you're hanging around. And the longer you stay there, the longer, the harder it's gonna be to get out, and the longer you're just wasting time, missing out on opportunities to really find your best self. So yeah, no, it's 100%, and I commend you for cutting those folks out of your life, man. You, you gotta do that, you gotta do it, because even at the level I'm at, there are people who mean well, but their version of meaning well and my version of meaning well are two different things. And as a leader, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, someone who's wise, you have to recognize that as quick as possible. If your value systems are aligned or if they're not, then you part ways, wish them well, they wish you well, and no harm done. So now I commend you for it, man. But it's, it's at every level. It's at every level. You, you have to be conscious of that. No, yeah, you're like, there's negative people in, in any any level of success or any level of income. Um, 
Right. Just because that, that's how they are. You, like, you can be a millionaire, and you could be humble, you could be cocky, you could be so, like, it, it's such a wide range of different personalities and different traits that um, you, you have to know who you are and surround, the, um, surround yourself with the people that match that. Correct. Correct, man. No, absolutely. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. So, so what was the driving force for you starting this podcast? Because, you know, I, I, my wife, when she found out you started a podcast, she's like, what, Junior? My kids, what? How's he going to have a podcast? He's not, he, he doesn't like to talk. He, you know, he's not really the most outgoing guy. So I'm like, no, nah, he's changed. A lot has changed in the last few months you guys haven't seen. And so I want to commend you first and foremost for getting, making this happen, Junior, because I'm really proud of you, man, and, and all your continued success and continued work. But what was it? Give me kind of the, the timeline on how you came to a place where you said, you know what, it's time for me to do this. I'm, I'm tired of just talking about it. I'm ready to do it. And then actually making it happen. So for the longest, like even, even – um, if the people who don't know, I used to be an admin at Boston Church with you. Um, and for the longest, I think we had a conversation that I always wanted to do a podcast, but I always felt the need that I need to reach a level of success and a level of comfortability with being in front of the camera. And you look real comfortable in front of the camera now, man. I'm telling you. Got your we, know, skills we, 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 know, we know each other, so it's like easy. So it's, it's, it's still a it's still step by step that I need to be comfortable. Um, yep. I'm a little bit nervous primarily because this is a very new venture, like a new venture for me. Um, mm -hmm. But I, my main, my end goal is to help motivate and uplift, uplift um as much people as I can. I have a I have a very unique story that you will learn throughout the process of, of um the next couple of episodes. But I already I, I already know the story. I'm I'm talking to the listeners. I'm talking Oh to my bad man. <laughs> <laughs> um but I my main thing um outside of real estate I um I just want to help people. People um, just need a, I feel like they need a voice of different um, tips to, um, that they need to do on a daily basis or however, however often they, they want to do it to stay motivated. Um, we li um, there are negative people and negative um, people in, any, in everyone's, in everyone's um lives that me me talking about happiness or me having other guests talking about different um different areas of of how to become happy happy with yourself um is what motivating what what motivated me to do this podcast i'm a, even though i'm less sad than i was when i was 19 i'm still kind of sad so this whole thing of talking and 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 telling people how to be happy and how to be motivated, it's still a new thing. But as people, we will uh, we build each other up, and that's the main thing. I just want to help uplift people. Like I want to be a small piece of of what made like somebody's day or what made somebody smile or what made somebody do a certain thing in their life. Love it. Love it, Junior. And, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head where it's you trying to inspire and, and above all, it's people who can relate to you. You know, I think that you, you started off by saying, you know, you thought you had to be at a certain level before you did this. But the reality is people like realness. I don't care if you're just starting out. I don't care if you're established, if you're real and folks can relate to you, you know, you add value. You can, you have the power to add value to someone's life, to someone's day, to someone's minute with the content you share that meets them right where they are. And so, no, nah, man, I really want to commend you for starting it and, and taking 
it takes courage, it takes commitment, it takes a lot of pieces to put this together, man. So I really commend you for putting it all together and, and uh, making it happen for you in order for you to have a platform to support others and, and help others, man. It's inspiring for me to see what you're doing. And it keeps me on my toes. I'm like, man, I got to do some more interviews and some more episodes, man. I, I can't let the young buck outshine me, man. He's going he's gonna to show me up. Yeah, I was like, um, I, like, I had the logo, de- like, my logo designed um, pretty quickly. And I put, like, um, my first episode and the second episode that I did with Rob for his podcast out pretty quickly. Um before I, I kind of like had kind of like a format in mind on how exactly I was going to do the podcast, primarily because I felt like if I, if I waited until I have more, more of a plan, it would not have been out for a very long time. Correct. Getting to market as quickly as possible is the name of the game, my friend. Get yeah, to but, market. Yeah, because I, I know I'm... I'm kind of prof- like we talked about this. I'm I'm a professional. I like to do things like pretty um like good and like even like now with this recording, like I stumbled over my words some like in certain areas. But I just feel like while especially on um, providing a good message is better than you stumble in words if if you times. I'm gonna say it even better. Providing a good message is better than providing no message at all. <laughs> true, true, true. Right? Come yeah, on, man. That's what it's about. Yeah, no, and, and that's you know, I, I think as young people out here who you know, I, I wanna leave you guys with a few advice because I had to jump jump to a couple calls, but you know, people get caught up in, you know, judging themselves too hard. And I think the first step to freeing yourself from the mental bondage we put ourselves in, and I'm not even going to say we put ourselves in it. It starts with our parents. They don't know any better. We are taught, and I, I've been really exploring this, this thought, and I haven't even spoke to you about this, but I've really been kind of evaluating life and kind of, you know, where I've, I've struggled, how I've succeeded, how I've overcome and how I can help others based right where they are. But I think our parents, they put a lot of pressure on us to be perfectionists. You agree with that? To get no, it right. Yeah, 100%. The, you, oh, you got to get all A's. Oh, that's not, not my kid. My kid's the best kid, right? Hey, And then they come down on you when you don't meet their expectations of what they believe success to be. And so I really strive with my kids not to do that because I don't think that serves anybody well in the long run. And I think The reality is, is that failure is really the key to success. And we have to, if we embrace it, and that's one thing I I will say, my dad never put a lot of pressure on me to perform. And I think that's why I always felt I had permission to fail. He never said that, but I knew that if I failed or if I, if I succeeded, he still would love me. He'd still be supportive, supportive of me. And I think that's where a lot of families and a lot of parents have gone wrong where they chastise or punish their children for not meeting this bar of expectation that I don't know who came up with, but you know, their parents and their parents and their parents, it goes back generations, as opposed to when failure happens, explore the failure. Why did you fail? What you, can you learn from this failure? Are you giving your best effort? How can I support you so that going forward, you're able to, to do it better? Or maybe we need to change your teacher or maybe we need to change the subject matter. It takes effort. It takes a lot to, to give someone this kind of support, but guess what? That's the kind of support you need to give yourself. You need to give yourself permission to fail. And I'm talking to everyone out there listening to this because that to me has been a huge key to my success, not believing in what, you know, we're all taught that perfection is best. No, failure, embracing failure is best. Because again, if you don't fail, you don't learn. If, if you get straight A's in school, are you ever really challenged? Are you ever really tested? Are you ever really pushed? No, when you, when you, your results aren't what you want, that's when you have an opportunity to really explore, how do I get the results I want in a given area, you know, just based on, you know, what I can change next time when I approach it, you know? So I think that's uh, super important. I mean, I can tell you for me, one of the biggest fears I had was my second flip. I went in there super cocky, like, yeah, I'm the king of the world. I'm this, I'm that. And I ended up making negative $200,000. How's that sound? 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and my good friend Hughes, he asked me, like, Rob, what are you going to do? I'm like, man, now I know how to be a millionaire. You know, I could have let that situation crush me very easily because I had $200,000 lying around like that back then. Like, what, what am I going to do? You know, I could have cried. I could have given up. I could have went back to work corporate. And this was during the last recession. But I said, you know what? I'm not going to let that define me. You know, and again, it's, it was me taking the pressure off myself. And that's what we as people have to learn how to do. And it just takes time. It takes effort. It takes practice. And this is why shifting your mindset and looking at the bright side, gratitude, being grateful for even the negative things that happen to us is to me the key to start unlocking those pieces. Now, and, and, and it starts with being grateful for the good things. And if we can practice gratitude on the good things, and eventually transition to gratitude for the negative. Like right now we have the coronavirus, but I'm grateful that I get to spend more time with my family. You know, I'm grateful that my kids are getting to spend more time with each other. You know, I'm grateful for, you know, my tenants who are still paying their rent. Some of them are struggling, but you know, I'm, I'm grateful that it's starting to make some new connections out here. It, it's forcing people to be a little bit more understanding of each other. It's forcing people to be more adaptable in the market. It's doing a lot of good despite what's going on. Yes, we all agree it's negative, people are dying and, and everything's going on, but at the same time, we have to be grateful for the positive sides of it. And, and I think, again, that's where gratitude would transition you from, you know, you know, for the positive to being grateful, finding gratitude in anything in life. And so that's what I wanna leave your listeners with and, and definitely get your thoughts on that before we wrap up. Oh uh, yeah, 100%, like you, um... I learned the most with my lowest points than I have with my highest points. That, like, that, 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 like you, you don't learn from this. That you, for the most part, you don't really learn from your successes. You learn from the low points and and the mistakes you made over throughout your life. So that's like um that's a hundred percent um. Just before we wrap up, I just want to um, have you answer some additional questions before you have to make the calls. What is your biggest motivation now? My biggest motivation? Um, that's a very good question. So I think when I look back at my life, Junior, I clearly can, can recognize some turning points in my life. For example, when I left corporate America, and, you know, my wife told me I had a really hard day at work. My wife was like, just go find a job. I looked on Craigslist. I saw an ad for a Dorchester real estate expert. The gentleman that hired me that I, from that Craigslist ad literally changed my life. He taught me lending. He taught me real estate development. He taught me project management. He taught me property management. Like, he gave me all of these tools that poured into me and literally transformed my life. But it all was because of one encounter. You know, it started with a bad day at work. Then the second piece was my wife telling me, just do something about it. And then the, the real piece was taking action. And so, you know, I am motivated by my ability to share my story and empower people to take action. Whatever that action is, they're going to know best. But I truly believe and know that if everybody takes the right actions towards their goals and in their lives, their success is on the other side of that. And so my goal yeah. is to showcase stories of others, to showcase my own stories, to showcase things that really are, could potentially be a turning point for someone's life. You know, and that's the thing. I'm al I've always been fascinated with transformation, how people go from rich to poor, how people go from depressed to happy. You know, whatever the transformation is from a negative to a positive, I think we all are fascinated by it, but I truly want to be a catalyst of that change for others. And that is what motivates me to do what I do each and every day, uh, to help people get over that hurdle, get over that hump, and, and see that whatever it is they're seeking is possible, but there's a few things they have to change in their lives in order to, to make it a reality. I'm an advocate. I'm one of them. Just, just let the <laughs> listener know. <laughs> right. Seven, seven years, man. I'm, I'm glad I, I, I rubbed off you something positive. Something positive rubbed off on you, man. Even though we, we live near each other, so he used to bully me, and then right. he taught me how to be happy. <laughs> Never a bully. Yeah. And what are some of the tips you recommend um, uh, you, you want to give to people who are unsure on what they want to do with their lives? That's a good question. Um, 
the first thing is really focus on you. Focus on exploring a range and a variety of experiences. And, and that could be through internships, that could be through reading, that could be through YouTube University, watching YouTube. But I think young people especially, it's really hard to know what you want to do. And so the only way you're going to figure it out is to try new things, guys. You got to try, you got to try things. A lot of people don't know this, but before I was selling real estate, you know, early on, I was a part-time agent before I got into development and lending and all that. But before I was selling real estate, I was selling junk on eBay, real talk. And I call it junk. I don't know if you've seen Gary V out there going to garage sales and finding stuff and selling. Have you seen that? I haven't, no. But I know you, you, you told me story, that story before. So, I, man, I was selling stuff on eBay. So my old company, I was working in corporate establishment, but we get all these leftover samples from companies that would bring us DVDs, toys, food, like all kinds of stuff. So any non-food item that they would leave as a sample, I grab probably 10, 20, 30 of them and just throw them up on eBay and just try to make some extra cash on the side, guys. And, you know, I share that story to say, like, it's not about, you know, figuring out or, or finding the, the, the perfect thing at the right time. It's about experience. That gave me the, my first, that was my first foray into sales experience, how to sell something on the internet. And so that was a great experience. I learned a lot. It was invaluable. I made a couple bucks in the process. You know, I, I wasn't going to get rich doing that. It wasn't my main business, but you have to explore what, what interests you and, and maybe something that you've never tried, you know, a business or a model or, you know, just explore different, different subjects. And, and then you want to read, you want to read a lot about business. You want to read a lot about life. Again, it's about expanding your mindset, expanding your horizon, seeing outside of your current environment. And that's super important. You have to be able to see uh, and, and, and connect with thought processes, with philosophies, with ways of thinking and mindsets outside of maybe the people around you in some cases. Um, and just to have a broader perspective on life. So, you know, I, I would highly recommend, you know, reading even like, you know, the, the Wall Street Journal on a daily basis, an a, a international news publication. Financial Times, like those are the kinds of things that I gravitate to, but find what you like. It could be Inc.com, it could be FastCompany.com. There's just so many resources out there, guys. Uh, but I think really understanding that you have to get a lot of exposure to different career paths and different uh, careers and opportunities is really going to be the, the, the launching point for you to be able to figure out what you actually want to do. And again, give yourself permission to try things and fail. You give yourself permission to fail. Don't expect everything to work out. But again, it goes back to practicing gratitude. And when you practice gratitude, you even learn to be grateful for those failures. No, yeah, 100%. Well, throughout the um, time that we worked together, I learned so much on um, the process, your mindset, and you even yourself have um, grown as a person. What are, some of your, what are some of your end goals? Um, you have currently. So on that last note, I will say I am forever the student, just as any great person is. The minute you think you mastered the game is the minute the game's over for you. So I just yeah. want to add that in there. And, and, I'm, and I'm not done growing. I feel like I'm just at the beginning of my journey. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. You know, I, I always feel that way. And um, I always like, man, it's not a lot of time. But end goals... You know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm achieving my greatest goals right now. And, and it, the only difference will be, it'll be just on a larger scale, but that doesn't diminish the accomplishment. When I was younger, I used to think I needed more money and more reach and more influence in order to have, be, be fulfilled and have a huge impact. But I'm, I've, when I look back on my life, I've had such a positive impact on so many people's lives and I've made other people millionaires. I've helped other people transform their lives, go from being in a tough place to being in a great place. So my goal is, I guess, to just continue growth relative to my reach and, and, and really being able to inspire others and, and give back and, and give more uh, to the world in the form of, you know, content I can share and lessons I can leave and, and things of that nature. Tangible goals, yes, I want to build my real estate portfolio. Um, you know, I want to build my team. I want to start some, you know, innovative businesses that solve some real problems for millions of users. Like those are the kinds of things that drive me now on the business side. But at the core, my happiness comes from understanding that I'm doing things to help other people 
transform their lives. You know, and that, that for me is like the driving factor. It starts with my wife and my kids. And from there, it's, it's anyone who are my, my colleagues, my team members, you, you, Mr. Mauricio, my friends, my loved ones, and uh, anyone who sees a piece of my content at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I, I know some people have like really tangible goals as I want to, you know, have a billion dollars and things of that nature. Yes, I, I, I have some big numbers that I want to attain as far as my business goals go, but I think the most important goals, and I know for a lot of young people, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear about the money side, but it's really about the you side. It's like what really drives you and motivates you and, you know, what brings you the most joy. Because if you're happy, it's just so much easier to achieve your goals. But more importantly, the journey is just so much better. No, yeah, 100%. So for the listeners that don't already know who you are, where can they find you? They can find me on robertlnichols.com. They can find me on Instagram, at robertlnichols. They can find me on YouTube, forward slash robertlnichols. And, um, you know, those are really the main platforms that you'll be able to kind of partake in my content and connect with me on a consistent basis and kind of see what I'm up to. I try to post at least one post a day, if not sometimes two or three. But, um, you know, there's a lot going on, you know, as, and, and I think for me that the, one of the goals I have is more balanced in running my businesses and still being able to promote and, and build my, my social brand as well to, to have more reach and, and really connect with more people um, at the end of the day. So, yeah, no, but that's what the best place is to find me. And, um, you know, June, I really, again, thank you for the opportunity to be on your podcast, man, I, uh, and, and to be interviewed by you. Uh, you know, I, you, your story is inspiring. You know, I, I know you for so many years. It's really exciting for me to see your growth. It brings me so much joy uh, to know I've had a positive impact, but more importantly, that you've done the hard work and taken the action and, and taken the steps to achieve and to start to, to get on the path of, of where you want to get to, man. So continue doing what you're doing, man. And you're, you are a true inspiration to all of us, cancer survivor and over, overcoming some serious adversity at a young age. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to see that you're, you begun to inspire and uh, help others change as well, man. No, yeah, I will be forever grateful for your help throughout um, the seven years we've known each other. And you have to be the first guest that I, that I talked to for my podcast. So thank you again. I'm honored. Thank I'm you honored. again. And this is not going to be the, the first or last episode, so. That's right, man. More to, plenty more to come. Looking yeah, forward understand. to the next one. Yep. Thank you for, for everyone that have listened um, to this podcast. I have some other podcasts with other um, influential people um, from different industries. Um, thank you again. Um, and DM me if you have any questions directly. Have a good day. Bye. Take it easy.